Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, April 16th, and this is take three. Oh boy. <laughs> it is a cool, rainy, overcast, foggy morning here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Such is life. It is April after all. And I am enjoying my Talbert Linier Britannia Squat Bulldog with some War Horse ready cut and I'm pretty much at the bottom of the bowl here because I had to do this three times now uh, my software is all goobered up something went wrong uh, well no, nothing went wrong I upgraded my operating system last weekend uh, after I made my Sunday video and everything seemed to go swimmingly but uh, apparently the newest version of OBS which is the software I use to to record and to live stream uh, didn't carry over some of the settings and apparently the hotkeys are all messed up too so I thought I was recording earlier and I wasn't and I'm going to actually check right now just to make sure I'm still recording. I do seem to be still recording, so that's a good thing. So unfortunately, uh, as is often the case, takes one and two were stellar, and now I'm tired of talking about a tobacco. And uh, I don't know if I can recreate any of that for you, but I'll do my best. <laughs> uh, but let me, let me get rid of the ash here, and I'm going to reload with some Haunted Bookshop. That'll get the mental juices flowing. Mental juices, that doesn't sound like something you want happening. All right. So, I'll try, I'll try to recap what I wanted to talk about this morning. Um, the, the topic came to me uh, yesterday, this morning, uh, when I saw the news beginning yesterday, that uh, Mike Lancaster had passed away. Now, I did not know Mike Lancaster personally. I certainly knew him by reputation. Uh, if you do not know, uh, he founded, I think he founded, he certainly ran the group uh, uh, Tobacco Pipe Collectors, TPC. I think that's right. Um, he was, by all counts, uh, an incredibly wonderful energetic gentleman who helped a lot of people in the pipe community uh, helped helped carvers get started helped folks network helped uh, collectors find carvers and carvers found collectors all sorts of stuff like that and uh, you know he clearly clearly did a lot and will be missed But what struck me most um, well what struck me most this morning as I was looking at Instagram with were, were all the the heartfelt um, condolences and people recognizing his passing. This clearly was a man who touched a lot of people's lives. And, uh, you know, it's a wonderful testament to his life, a life well lived. But the other thing that struck me was how young he was. Uh, I believe he was only about 46, 47 years old. Now, to some of you, that might seem old. It doesn't seem like it was that long ago that I would have looked at 46 or 47, you know, as being close to 50, and boy, 50, that's getting old. Now I'm 10 years beyond that, and I think to myself, gee, that guy was young. And, yeah, it's just the way of life, right?
I remember thinking of my grandfather as an old man, and looking back on it now, I'm older than he was at those times, and I don't feel like an old man. I oddly don't feel any older than I felt back then. Uh, funny how I, I never, I never feel like I've grown up. Sometimes, well, I shouldn't say I never feel like I've grown up. I certainly have adult responsibilities and all that, but mentally, sometimes I feel. Like I'm still like 12 or so. Not in terms of intelligence, before any of you make a crack about that. <laughs> but just in terms of my, my needs to be an adult. But yeah, realizing how young he was just, you know, reinforced and it's no surprise, right? But reinforce that we don't know when our last day will be. And we don't know. We plan for tomorrow, but we don't know if there'll be a tomorrow. Heck, we don't know if we'll make it to the end of this video. I'll make it to the end of this video. Um, we hope, you know, and, and we should hope, but can't bet on it. We can't bet on it, so we have to make the most of every moment. But we can go too far. You know, we can we can try to pack so much in that we don't enjoy any of it. And the more we pack in, the faster time goes by. So you can wind up having just as many regrets at the end of a life that's packed as you can at the end of a life that really didn't you didn't really get around to doing anything. So how do you know? How do you strike that balance? I don't know. I like to think I'm striking it, but I have no idea. I guess the two things that I think are important, and this may vary from you know to, from individual to individual, but what I think are the two important things in, in terms of living your life well are to first off understand understand that you 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 are going to die you know understand that you've got limited time and then secondly understand what it is you want to do Have goals, but have balanced goals. You know, know that you're not going to do absolutely, you know. <laughs> I'm going to travel the world. I'm going to see every country. I'm going to learn to speak seven languages. I'm going to be the first private citizen to go into orbit. And eventually I'm going to go to the moon and maybe Mars. If I get to Mars, then I'll say, well, I won. Well, you, you might do that, you know, but... By the time you're done with it all, you're going to say, wow, where did the time go? You're going to look back on your life as a, as, as a series of, of Instagram and Facebook posts, and you're going to vaguely remember taking those pictures. On the other hand, you might say to yourself, well, I like watching television, so I'm just going to watch television and... Let the world go by. Don't worry about that other stuff. I'm just going to have a good time. I don't think you'll be much better off. You know? I, I don't think anyone's ever died thinking, gee, I wish I watched a little bit more TV. But has anyone ever died thinking, gee, I wish I did a little bit more of a thing. I'm sure they have. And I'm sure I could list things, but again, it's going to be different for every person. But it seems like it's becoming harder. 
harder for people to identify what is a reasonable amount to accomplish in a lifetime. And what I mean by that is that the, the, we're losing a sense of what is realistic. You know, I grew up at a time when I knew there were limitations on what I could achieve. And I don't mean that I was, you know, downtrodden or anything like that. It just, you know, there were things I wasn't going to be able to do. Because of my location, because of my economic um, status, um, all, all sorts of things, you know, it just wasn't going to be possible for me to do certain things. You know, but wait a minute, you live in America and anybody can become president in the United States. Ooh, yeah, uh, theoretically that's true. And if I wanted to, if, you know, if that was the focus of my life, maybe I could have. Um, wouldn't want to, <laughs> but, but, you know, it is theoretically possible, I suppose. But I'm thinking at a more basic level, like, um, when I was a little boy, I went through a period where I wanted to be a baseball player. Um, I wanted to be a pitcher, actually. I... I can't play baseball. You know, I love the sport. I love watching it and following it. And I'll, I'll even watch Little League baseball just because I, I love the sport that much. I love the game. But I didn't have the talent for it. And I realized very early on that that wasn't going to happen. And so I said, okay, I'm not going to play baseball. I guess I'll do something else. <laughs> and I probably moved on to something equally ridiculous for me. And spend a little bit of time with that. Little girls to uh, look at the other side of the aisle might uh, say they're going to be a princess. Now, I think most, I don't have kids, but it, you know, it seems like most little girls go through that princess phase. Now, unless you're in a royal family, you're probably not going to become a princess. And they will eventually learn that and will move on to something that's more achievable. But as we become more interconnected, more global, more instant access to information, those that, that sense of, of, of what is realistic is starting to get blurred. The boundaries between fantasy and reality are getting blurred. They're getting blurred by uh, I don't know how far down this path I want to go, but yeah, you know, social media is doing a lot to create artificial lives for everyone, and that's not a good thing. Yeah, you know, I try really hard to be the person that is sitting before you right now is pretty much the person that I am. Um, I don't get into a lot of stuff about my work, uh, my, my day job, as I like to call it, because it's not relevant to most of what we talk about. And, you know, there's just aspects of it that it's complicated. I, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, I may not talk about every... Thing that's going on in my personal life not that i'm hiding any great secrets right now or anything but you know there are times when something might happen that i don't feel compelled to share with the world but for the most part um if you meet me you're going to meet the person that's talking to you right now it's my understanding and i, I don't know this for a fact but i've you know, seen articles discussing it and i've, I've heard people talking about it um, if you met some of these people that are on, so, on like Instagram, for example, and they post 75 pictures of themselves a day, you know, here I am with my coffee, here I am with my dog or whatever, uh, you wouldn't recognize them because of the abilities that they have now to change their appearance. Change their appearance and create artificial environments, uh, which appear very real.
and that's fine for them, you know, and they're just trying to do whatever it is they're trying to do. Um, but it creates this, this alternate reality where, you know, a young person looks at that and says, hey, I can do that. They can do it. I can do it. Well, they're not doing it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's worrisome. Uh, I forgot to say at the beginning of this video, and I said it the first two times I recorded it, that I didn't exactly know where this was going. And the truth is, I've wound up at yet a third place. <laughs> anyway, I think you get my point. You know, the, the, the passing of Mr. Lancaster just reinforced in me today the, the fleeting nature of life itself and, and the, the importance of a life well lived. And how you define a life well lived is really up to you. There is no you know, written in stone definition of that. But I think understanding that life will end and having expectations that are within the realm of not just possibility, but realistic possibility. Those two things are the key. Well, folks, with that, um, got a got a day planned today. I don't know exactly what I'm going to be doing. I was going to do some outdoor gardening work yesterday, but the weather threatened to be raining all day. Didn't get a drop of rain. Uh, today, of course, it's overcast and foggy, and who knows what's going to happen, so we'll see. Got plenty of other things to keep me occupied. I'm going to be chatting with a, a good friend of mine that I haven't talked to in a couple years. Looking forward to that. Uh, going to be doing that in just an hour or so. And, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get on with Sunday. And as Sunday comes to an end, we'll get ready to go back to work tomorrow and start the fun all over. So with that, folks, thank you for indulging me. I really appreciate you tuning in and uh, spending a little bit of time with me this Sunday morning. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday and you're looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.